Welcome back to another tutorial. This time I go over the physical button component. The physical button component lets you make more physical based buttons, so buttons that need to be pushed down. Whenever you're thinking about a physical button, just think about like a button in the real world. You know, like if you've ever like whacked a button, you know, like an elevator button, a door button, anything like that. If you've been lucky to be in a, you know, really complicated control room and pushed a button in there, those two. Let's get started. Before that though, just a quick tribute to the lion. We don't need the lion this time because we need a, a more sort of physical button setup, so bye bye lion. Go over to Spoo POV and let's get started. So I have a setup here which is basically two cylinders stacked on top of each other. You can see that one is wider than the other um, and the other one is on, on, on top of the other and red. I found this setup in uh, Vigilobo's uh, public folder and I decided to take it out here and appropriate it for this tutorial. Um, I've removed all the logics that uh, Vigil had on it, uh, but I will uh, put this setup, as in just this basic button, inside my public folder, and I'll leave a note on that item, um, letting them know that, uh, letting people know that I, I took it from their folder. It was just a perfect setup for this, to be honest. Uh, it's also made entirely in game using procedural message, so that makes it quite uh, performant. So, with this, I'm going to go ahead and grab the dev tool tip, and I'm going to go inspect the bottom cylinder and open it up, and you'll see here that we have the uh, button. Now, as I said, uh, visually, the button is just two cylinders. Um, the top one here is the bottom gray one. You can see that here, it's gray. I could make it another color if I wanted to. Uh, here we go, there you go, now it's pink. But that's the bottom button, and then the press area slot is the top button. You can see it's red, and again, I can go ahead and make that uh, blue as well. I'm going to set it back to red for this tutorial. Though. So for physical button, what you actually want to do is add it to the part that you want to move. So when we set up this button, we want this part of the button to go down. In fact, if I just show you using the gizmo here, we want it to go in and out, in and out, like it's it's being pushed, like a you know, physical button, as so the namesake of the component. So we're going to add it to the press areas in the red portion of it. So we're going to go ahead and go to attach component. And we're looking for transform, interaction, physical button. And then this will add the physical button component. And it actually already works, but we do need to configure it a lot. I'm going to show you what it does as default when added. When I, when I click this button, you'll see it's moving horizontally in the Z direction a little bit. So if we look at the physical button component that's been added, we've got the standard properties, persistent, update order, and enabled, and we're going to leave those alone. But the next property is the press axis, and that determines which direction it moves when it's pressed. And right now it's set to the Z axis. We want that to be the Y axis, and we want it to be the negative Y axis, because that's down. So we'll do negative one here, and then we'll drop a zero from the update order into there. You can grab numbers and move them around. That's a shortcut that doesn't involve the keyboard. And so now you'll see when I push it, it goes down a little bit. These components are more designed, at least in my opinion, to be used with um, physical touch-based events. So if you notice, I take my index finger and I push it on the button, you'll see it also goes down as my index finger. So you can imagine this is an elevator button, then uh, you'd push it and uh, you know the elevator would come. So the next three properties are the same as other um, touch-related uh, components. We've got physical touch, remote touch, and out-of-sight touch. Physical touch is, as I said, with just the finger. Uh, or other physical touch sources. Remote touch is the laser, and out of sight touch means can you touch it without looking at it. We did a lot of that in uh, Touch Event Relay and Touchable Data, so I'll link those in the video description as well. These all link between each other because they're basically the same concept done three different ways. Edit mode only is for edit mode only. If you're in edit mode, you can touch it, and if you're not in edit mode, you cannot. Um, useful for sort of gameplay mechanics, admin panels, things like that. Active user filter is um, if you want to active user filter, the options are disabled, which just does nothing. Only active user means only the active user can push it, which is like the user which is parented to the object. Um, so think of it like a hat or some sort of gadget that's on your wrist, maybe some sort of you know PDA, etc. that's parented to you. Only the active user can push the button there. Active user when present is very useful for objects which may or may not be um, parented to a user. So if it's not parented to a user, anyone can use it. If it is parented to a user, only the active user or the user that it's parented to can use it. Exclude active user means the active user is in the person who is parented to it cannot use it. So this would be useful for weird gameplay mechanics where, you know, there's a button that only other people can push. Um, I think some of the people that have um, boopers on their nose, and so when you push their nose, it makes a boop noise. I think they use that one to prevent themselves from booping themselves by allowing other people to boop them. Um, I said boop like five times there. I apologize. Uh, we'll ignore legacy active user root only because that is um, the 
uh, legacy version of the active user filter. Pressed and released here are um, world delegates. We can't use them yet in Neo, so we'll just ignore them. Uh, press depth is how far things go down um, when you push onto them. We actually want to increase this one a little bit. Um, I know from experience that 0.08 kind of works out a little bit better. You'll see here now the button goes all the way down and looks like it's really being pushed. Remote press, press, uh, sorry, remote press speed is how fast it goes down when you press it remotely. So if we change this to like a really, really low number, doesn't actually appear to be changing things. I don't know what that one does. Um, we'll keep going. Uh, I might cut the video here usually, but uh, I'm just going to keep going. I have no idea what that does. Should we try a higher number? Let's try a higher number. No idea. People know, please let me know in the comments. I'll pin your comments so that people know for the future. Press threshold and release threshold control when the um, is pressed property here, when those fire, um, and they are based on sort of how high, how far the button needs to be pushed down. You'll see it's on 0 0.98 right now, which means that it has to be really far down before that pressed um, is pressed Boolean goes on to true. If I set this to an incredibly small number, so we can go to like 0, 0.1, you can see now, oh. come on, I tested this. You can see now that uh, it's responding earlier than the full push. I'm not entirely sure what units these are based in because I'm having trouble getting them to work. Um, play around with them for your individual button. It's basically how far it has to be down before the press is registered and releases how far it has to be released before the uh, release is, is registered. Is pressed and is hovering will um, let you know if you're pressing it or if you're hovering onto it. I'm just going to reset that thresh press or 298 again. There we go. Uh, is hovering as if you're hovering over it. As you can see here, I'm hovering with my laser and it's showing you it is hovering. Begin press vibration is a vibration for when you begin pressing it. Um, this is on short. When you actually press it, as in when is pressing goes to true, is pressed goes to true, sorry. Uh, that's when that vibration happens. And then hover vibration is when you hover over it. The label property doesn't do anything. Please don't worry about it. Um, or at least I haven't seen it to do anything. Um, current pressing depth gives you a measure of how far you're pushing it down. This might be more reliable than press threshold is, because uh, right now I can't seem to get that to be reliable. But you'll see here, if I push it a little bit, you'll see I've pushed it by 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and then when it goes all the way to one, it means it's, it's full press depth. So you can read that to see how far I am pushing it down. The button offset and button position control the physical location of the button. Because the thing to note with um, the physical button is that it drives the um, the position of the slot. And that's why we've got two slots set up here, button and then press area. Because that means we can grab button and move it around, but we cannot move around press area because it's being driven by this component. So you'll see it starts at 0 0.1, and then when I lower this down, you'll see that's why press, thresh press threshold isn't working, I think. I think it might be based on the actual um, Y coordinates here. So you'll see here the Y coordinates changing when I push it and that it stops at 0 0.02. That's all the properties for physical button. I do want to cover one more thing with physical button, which is that physical button, like other button types, will respond to the button events node. So if we spawn button events in the world, and I'll link the video in the video description that covers button events more, where I use a Neo CUI button, but here we're going to use a physical button. We grab physical button, Spawn it in the world with secondary, hook it up to physical button, and now you'll see we get we get events like the Neo CUI button. I will uh, link to the uh, video I'm referring to in the video description. It's the push uh, get the user who pushed a button tutorial that uh, goes over button events in a lot more detail. That's physical button for you. You'll be able to find this, like I said, in my public folder. There'll be a note about where I got it from, as I'm otherwise I wouldn't be sure it's just two cylinders, but I want to make sure that. Uh, Vigil gets a nod. They make some cool stuff, but they don't always talk about it. Um, I hope that's helpful for you. I will see you next time. We'll be going over something else. This should be the last sort of button-y-based tutorial that I'm going to be releasing in this batch. 
Uh, so look out for some other topics coming soon. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.